Both of these lenses right here are 24 to 70s. Both of them are f 2.8. But this one, the Sony, costs a thousand dollars more. Why is that? So if you're looking for a 24 to 70, you're probably going to want to give this video a watch. I'm going to dive in deep as to what actually makes these lenses different. Oh, and this video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. If you want to take advantage of 50% off of the whole first year on the personal plan, click the link down below. Little Birdie has told me that that deal is going to be ending soon. Now I'm not here to tell you which one to buy, so I'm gonna give you a ton of examples of different tests and I want you to make the decision for yourself. Starting with autofocus. Now the easiest way I can show you autofocus is to sap on the screen examples using both of these lenses. Recording the screen with the Ninja 5 allowing us to then see exactly what the Sony camera is seeing. So in this instance, we're looking for eye autofocus. How well is it tracking me doing the same thing with both lenses individually? And I'm not gonna see the results until you do, which is when I'm in the edit. All right, listen, I've watched this many times now to try and figure out differences and they're subtle, very, very subtle. It, the Sony maybe is a split second faster in some instances and it grabs the eye a couple of times where the Sigma just gets the face but it's still focused. So I did another test this time with it being purposely underexposed and the Sony grabs the eye and sticks to the eye a little bit better in instances where the Sigma doesn't but the Sigma's still in focus because it grabs the face. So they both do really well. Are you going to be making a bad decision by going with one over the other? Absolutely no, they're both great options for autofocus. Both are 82 mil threads on the front, which means if you have 82 mil filters, which is normally the size I recommend because they're big, they fit on most lenses. The Sony is a little bit lighter than the Sigma. This is 695 grams, whereas the Sigma is 835 grams. On paper, that's not a ton of weight. When you hold them in the hand, there is a noticeable difference. Even more so when you attach it to a camera body, you just kind of hold it in the hand. The Sony just feels a lot more balanced than the Sigma because the Sigma is now more front heavy than the Sony is. So that's something to bear in mind. What about minimum focus distance? It's actually better on the Sigma than it is on the Sony. We've got 18 centimeters on the Sigma and 21 centimeters on the Sony. That's three centimeters. Now size wise, if you hold them in the hand, they look pretty similar. But if you actually put them side by side, and take a closer look, you'll see that the Sigma is ever so slightly larger or longer when they're both compressed and when they are both fully extended. But the thing that makes this very interesting is Sony has managed to pack a ton more tech, a ton more features into a lens that is, in fact, smaller. On the Sigma, you have a zoom ring as you do on the Sony. However, this is, it is what it is. However smooth or however hard yours is, however it changes over time, that's how it is. On the Sony, you have a zoom ring obviously as well, but they've added this little switch, smooth or tight, and that does exactly what you think it would do. If it's on smooth, it's a bit looser, but if you put it on tight, it's now much firmer to turn and it just, it feels much nicer. It's kind of funny really that they call it tight and smooth because I find the tight to be smoother to zoom with than the smooth saying is. The smooth is really just loose. And obviously with the Sigma, you only have one option to control your aperture and it is within the camera body itself. There's no physical aperture ring on the lens. On the Sony, you got a bunch of different options. You can change it to the A on there, which basically allows you to control the aperture within the camera body. You also have a de-clicked aperture ring that you can turn and then you can flick the little switch and now it's a clicky aperture. As well as that, you can also put it to the A and lock it. So now it can't come out of the A. So you've got a bunch of different aperture options there. With that aperture de-clicked, it means you can smoothly turn the aperture ring and get the aperture changes that you would otherwise have to change in camera for the Sigma and it's gonna be a hard evident change. It's completely smooth on here and if you're going from like outside to inside and you want it to be a nice transition that you can use all as one shot with no cuts, you can do that with the Sony. Now, traditionally speaking, all mirrorless lenses these days are focused by wire, meaning it's electronic when you turn the manual focus ring inside there. Previous to focus by wires, when you turn the focus ring, something physically turns inside there, and so it's much more responsive. People don't like focus by wire lenses in general when it comes to manually focusing. On the 24 to 70 Mark II, there is actually a feature Sony has called, and I don't want to get this wrong, natural linear manual focus response. It mimics what it's like to have a non-focus by wire lens. What that essentially means is when you come to focus on things manually, it's a lot easier to do so because 
it's well, once you have the muscle memory of what's not in focus and what's in focus and little tiny adjustments that you can make, it just, it feels more precise. It feels more smooth and easy to do versus doing exactly the same thing on the Sigma 24 to 70. This doesn't really have bad focus acceleration, which is where you turn it a bit faster and it focuses faster. It doesn't have that. It's actually handled very well in this. But when you compare the two side by side and you use them both, this is not quite as easy and as precise to focus as it is using the natural linear manual focus response system in the 24 to 70 Mark II. Both lenses are weather sealed. Both have gaskets on the rear of the lenses. So you're gonna be good to use them in rain and snow. Something Sony has been doing recently with their lenses is to pretty much eliminate focus breathing. There's some magic going on and they're doing it with this lens. And rather than me just telling you about it, let me show you versus the Sigma. Now the fairest way to demonstrate focus breathing is to have two cameras set up, one with each lens on each. Look at the corners, look to see if you see any movement. That's what focus breathing is. And we're gonna show you this test while we talk about today's sponsor, which is Epidemic Sound. Don't skip ahead yet, right out the gate, right up front for you. If you click on the link down below and use the code on the screen, you will get 50% off of your whole first year on the personal plan. That deal is not gonna be around much longer. If you're looking for music, you've been thinking about Epidemic Sound, take advantage of that offer now before it goes away and you have to pay full price. I'll move back and forth here looking down the middle so you can try and spot the difference. But Epidemic Sound, I've been using them for the longest time. As someone that puts out videos every single week, I'm always looking for the fastest way that I can find music to add to my videos. I just want to be able to navigate the website quickly and easily to find the music that I need to use. And Epidemic Sound does that based off of my previous downloads, things that I've been using recently based off the music that's on my YouTube channel. So it's pretty smart in that respect and does reduce the amount of time that I actually end up spending searching for music. And something they've done recently is allow you to specify a part of a track that you like and find something similar just like based off that part of the track. So you can click on this little button just here and then select the in and out points of the track that you wanna use and it will update accordingly based off of that specific part of the track other tracks that are relevant to it. Which is really useful if you need to use a very similar style of track throughout a video, but you don't really wanna use the same track over and over again. Epidemic has over 35,000 music tracks, over 90,000 sound effects, of which are constantly being updated every single week. Personal plan, which is the deal that we talked about earlier, that is safe for posting on, I don't wanna miss any. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, and for podcasts as well. So wherever you post your content, that personal plan has you covered for all of those. Thank you Epidemic for sponsoring today's video. And have you figured out which lens is which? If not, I will slap it on the screen right here. All right, I've watched that back many times and uh, it's hard to tell the difference. I'm really not selling the case for this Sony, am I? So let's set up a situation where it should be more obvious than just your average film in a person at 24 mil situation. So what I've done for this shot to try and fix the focus breathing to make it more evident is to add some depth, add some objects around, look at the corners for certain things to uh, see that focus breathing, tap on this box to track focus, move back and forth, and then side by side, I'll, uh, I'll put the Sigma on screen and hopefully we'll see a little bit of a difference with our focus breathing. We shouldn't complain. We're basically proving that the Sigma 24 to 70 handles focus breathing incredibly well for video, just as well as the brand new $1,000 more 24 to 70 Mark II GM. Although it's not on paper a par focal lens, it performs nearly as well as a par focal lens. And what that means is when you zoom in and out, your focus point does not change. So you could be manual focus, you zoom all the way in, you focus it, you zoom out to 24 from 70 and it will still be in focus. Technically, it's not a par focal lens, but it performs as well as one. Whereas this is in fact a par focal lens on paper. Now sharpness is obviously something that can be both good and it can be bad. Sharpness in video might make it look too digital. Whereas for photos, you might want the sharpest image that you can get. So let's jump into Lightroom and take a look at how both of these lenses compare for the same shots side by side. Welcome to my screen, won't you come on in? These photos are nothing fancy. They are purely for technical pixel peeping peoples, Peters. One thing that's immediately evident to me is that the color reproduction on the Sigma is substantially warmer. So you can see right there, that's a Sony, that's a Sigma. Sony, Sigma. It's easily correctable, but it's something to be aware of. Right, so let's just go straight to the brick wall here and uh, let's zoom right in. Let's go right into the middle of the Sony and then right into the middle of the Sigma. Let's, uh, let's warm that up a bit, shall we? 
the Sony is sharper when we take a picture of a brick wall. That previous one was at 50 mil. Let's go to 24 mil. Tougher, much tougher. Um, I definitely give the edge to the Sony. It's a little bit sharper, not huge, not thousand dollars. Zoom into the plant in the middle, zoom into the plant in the middle and oh, that's a tough one. That's really tough. I couldn't tell you more about on the left side of my face right there. Yeah, the lip is sharper there. You can tell substantially sharper actually that's a lot more obvious all right this little thing on my rental right now so let's focus on the five so we've got the sony on the left and we've got the sigma on the right the sony has the sharpness there now that's actually a lot more obvious look at this black line there look at the black line compared to the black line on that massive difference in sharpness a lot more contrast on that line let's try the gmc logo it's sharper for sure it's sharper so if i had to sum up this video as in which one is for you i don't think i could honestly the sigma costs a thousand dollars less us less than the sony is it worth it that's a decision you've got to to make basically feature wise in terms of everything it offers this does have a ton more do you need that? That's entirely up to you, how you shoot, what it is that you shoot. Do you need to use some of those features? That's the easiest way I can do it. I got nothing else to tell you. If you need reassurance that the Sigma's still good, just rewatch this video. Because honestly, it really is for a lens that's as old as it is. It's two, three, three years old and um, $1,000 less money. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.